Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. I think it's fair to say that to this point anyway, I haven't exactly been a convert to the NATO strap. In fact, I've always thought there was more than a whiff of the Emperor's new clothes about the things. I had a look at my Instagram, at Just One More Watch, by the way, 300 plus posts, only 10 photos feature watches on NATO straps, and I'll tell you exactly why I haven't been a convert. I have two main objections. The first is they tend to add bulk to a watch. I like dive watches. Dive watches tend to be a little bit thicker in the first place. And if you put a double pass NATO underneath a dive watch, you're adding two, maybe even three, or slightly more than three millimeters of thickness to what is already a thick and chunky watch on your wrist. It also becomes a bit top heavy, tends to bobble around, not good. My second objection is that with a regular NATO, you end up with exactly the same problem you have with a leather strap. You're stuck with the holes on the band, and you get that, oh, it's a little bit too tight, or oh, it's a little bit too loose thing happening, you never end up with a happy medium. So you're left with a choice, you either wear it too tight, or you wear it a little looser. And if you wear it looser, it only exacerbates the top heavy bobbling thing, C.1. However, that could all be about to change. I've got four NATO straps to play around with today from a new company called Spring Made. Now, not only are they single pass NATOs, just over a millimeter thick, eliminating problem number one, but they are infinitely adjustable, thereby eliminating problem number two. Sounds compelling. Let's flip the camera and have a look at them. Two watches, four spring made NATO straps. Before I get into the inevitable strap fashion show, which is rather the point today, where are you buying these ones from and how much do they cost? Well, Spring Made don't currently sell them direct. I will leave a link to their website. There's some useful uh, sizing, how to get these to fit perfectly. There's some useful information there. But if you want to pick one of these ones up, at the moment, you're currently going to Amazon.com. Amazon currently have five different colorways in stock, black, bond, green, blue, and gray in 22 and 20 mil, all the same price, 25 US dollars each. Not the cheapest NATO I've seen, but certainly not the most expensive. I'll leave a link to those in the description of the video. And the quality of them looks spot on for that price. Lightweight nylon, just over one millimeter thick and only a single pass as you can see. So not gonna raise the profile of the watch. All brushed hardware on these ones. Uh, plenty of stitching double stitch to ensure that they stay in place. Apparently this buckle, again nicely brushed finish, is rated at 200 pounds. Can take 200 pounds of weight before deforming and the nylon NATO itself will take 900 pounds before deforming. I wasn't about to test those claims today. I'm sure also at some point Spring Made will personalize this buckle. It would have been nice to have seen their logo on there, but it's not a deal breaker at 25 bucks. I should point out that they came in a little baggie with another little baggie inside of them. Not really sure what I'm gonna do with four of these. All right, let's start with the black one on the SKX then, 22 mil spring bars in here. Uh, nothing too radical here, nothing I'm sure you haven't done before with countless other NATOs. What the point of difference is when you actually put the thing on wrist. Thread it through the buckle, thread it back through the other side of the buckle and then into the two fasteners. Fold it back over as you would with a regular NATO and there it is sitting on wrist. Now, I like to wear my watches tight but not too tight and the fact that this is infinitely adjustable means you get just the right amount of tension. And there it is adjusted just the way I like it, tight but not too tight. Now I have got a seven inch wrist and I would say that the, the length of NATO, the amount of material here is just about perfect for me. You might struggle to get it back into the fasteners though if you have seven and a half inch wrists or larger. But there's the SKX, doesn't sit too high, as you can see, it isn't raising the profile of it, doesn't bobble around too much, and if my wrist expands over the course of a hot Sydney summer's day, I can expand the NATO strap as I go. A great idea. And there we go, same, same, but different. This time the SKX on the Army Green. Again, just exactly the right fit for me, making sure that that buckle is kind of tucked so that it sits flush with the NATO strap when it's back on wrist and as mentioned, just about enough excess strap here that I can fold it over and tuck it into the first of the, the two fasteners. On to the Oris then. Now I actually picked up the Oris in March this year 
And today was the first day that I took it off the stock standard bracelet. I guess that says a lot about the stock standard bracelet, but I could certainly see myself using either of these two NATO straps over the coming summer. I think the Dovial dial Oris with the Dovial blue around the outer ring and that pale gray center really goes nicely with either of these two straps and the brushed hardware complementing the brushed lugs of the Oris perfectly. And there it is on wrist. Now the Oris isn't a particularly thin watch, mostly because of that domed sapphire crystal, but because this is a single pass NATO, it still only comes in at 14 mil thick, even when attached to the NATO, color matched very nicely indeed. I must admit though, the gray one is the shortest in length, could have been doing with an extra half inch just to make sure that it tucks over into those fasteners, but not too bad, still perfectly workable. And there's the bond. Yeah, okay, perhaps bonds don't really go with a Dovial dial. I was being a little over optimistic with this one. Definitely better with black dial watches. I think this silver and black look, this one's a little bit longer, no problem tucking it into those fasteners, all good. So all in all, an interesting and innovative alternative to the regular NATO strap. Nicely made, nicely stitched, nice hardware on them. I'm sure that color range will expand in the weeks and months to come. So there you have it. Well, am I now a convert to the NATO strap? Well, I tell you what, I'm a damn sight closer to being a convert than I was before. I really like these spring-made NATOs. I think $25 is not a ridiculous amount of money to charge, and you're getting something different. Single pass, one mil thick, infinitely adjustable, nice brushed hardware. The selection available on Amazon is a little bit limited at the moment. I would expect them to add more color options in due course. I would also expect a young company like Spring Made, given a little bit of momentum behind them, to etch that buckle in the future or add a few nice little touches, perhaps improve that dodgy packaging. So all in all, if you're looking for something a little bit different, perhaps if you had the same two objections that I did to regular NATO straps, I would advise you to check these out. I think they're very interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.